Hi, you survived to Thursday again, you poor unlucky sucker. Anyway, <laughs> unlike Funimation, ha ha. Anyway, uh, yeah. <laughs> so if you didn't know, uh, Captain Tsubasa is also on his way out too. That's that's kind of sad, but it's also retirement, well, which is you know. Well, the manga is still going, but it's just gonna, it's not going to be like full on full on manga. It's just going to be like drafts and storyboards kind of thing. It's it makes it a lot easier for for the mangaka. Yeah, and then there again, I mean, like it just changes all around. But also, as you read in the headline, there's homeless anime now. Yeah, not 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 like in a cardboard box. They just don't have like a a streaming platform to be seen on. There's quite a few of them. It's not like this weird bargain bin of half dressed teenage girls anime. It's it's actually stuff from Toonami and whatnot. And yeah. then we got the spring anime and a whole boatload of trailers to show you guys. This is a, this is a chibi Godzilla show. Little little cute little Godzilla show. The Japanese do everything right, gosh. And then, by the way, as like huge news, which you may not be prepared for, Hideki Anu is serving french fries at McDonald's. No, I'm kidding. He has a very <laughs> special director's role coming up that will reveal to you it will likely melt your face if you didn't read the description. Don't go read it now. You'll ruin the surprise. Anyway, <laughs> hello, Nerdians. But yeah, it, it's been... Very insane few days, especially yesterday when I found out that, um, well, obviously Funimation died a couple days ago. And then turns out oh. there's over, there's over 100 um, and well, it says 192, but we got to narrow it down a little bit um, when I write the article. I will do that of uh, titles that are either only available um, on Hulu, Netflix and whatnot. And then there's titles um, that are only available to purchase. And then there's some that nothing at all so it's going to be very interesting i don't know if uh, um if it has anything to do with for, uh the format like the digital digital format that um perini was talking about um for funimation digital purchases that could be it but i mean we still have the same like voice actors and producers oh. and stuff like that they're, they're at crunchy roll i mean Ah. Greeny was the COO of Funimation. He's responsible for that downfall. Yeah. <laughs> so it it's insane to see how many titles are there. That yeah, and he's already go. and he's already passing on that uh, gift onto Crunchyroll. But uh, oh, yes, yes, he is. In the but, chat this evening, we have a member of the channel Arvita. Welcome aboard. And uh, well, you know. Free Wheel Burn, it says anime sucks. Yeah, well, some of it does, that's for sure. But also a lot of American stuff does. And have you read any Dutch stuff? I defy you to read Dutch stuff. <laughs> and Liam Mason is amused by the jokes. Welcome aboard, everybody. But as pointed out, Funimation, we've been talking about it here this little bit here in the beginning. Funimation is over. It is over and done. Ding dong, the purple witch is dead. That's right. But uh, it really didn't change anything. Just kind of... As Nerdigans was letting us know, everybody that had a job there has a job still. And that that's a little annoying. Like, again, I like Chris Sabat's performances. I do not like him as a person. And I really wish that if they were going to clean house at all, like, they really need to tell that guy to serve fries at McDonald's. They're not going to do that. Chris Sabat is way too popular. And he was with Funimation at the very <sighs> beginning, too. So Yeah, I know. Same with Sean Stemmel. And, and that, yeah, I know. Yeah. It, it does suck. But again, you got to remember who's running the operation over there. Yeah, Crunchyroll streaming services in Australia only have the, the last season. Yeah, I, I'm not surprised. I'm not. It, there's so much confusion with Crunchyroll. They can't seem to nail down any consistency. I mean... Well, well, also remember they lost the license to Bleach to Disney. So, and and Bleach was one of the series that actually made Crunchyroll. It was Bleach and Naruto, I believe, were the ones that um, that Crunchyroll uh, built their foundation on. Yep, I'm just sorry. I'm just bringing up the list right now. So we have a list, by the way, of shows that were left behind uh, now that don't have a streaming platform home. Meaning Crunchyroll, in their infinite genius, by the way, didn't just scoop these things up. They were like, oh, look at you. You're like kittens in a box. I'll just take you all home. No, no, they left those kittens on the corner. And look, 
Look at all these anime kittens that they left. I'm not kidding you. Look at yeah. all this. We're just, I'm not, a, don't even bother reading it. Just look at all this. <laughs> and I did, I have to check the rest of them, but like the heroic um, Aslan one, that one is not available. Same with Astro Boy. It's not available. Unbelievable. Um, FLCL. There's the crazy, Eureka 7 does that. Oh, this is insane. They could keep in mind. They could be. Some of them are like like Gurren Lagan is on uh, Hulu, for example. So I don't know why you, you would get rid of some of these titles in particular. Like Dot Hack, um, Dot Hack. Why would you get rid of Dot Hack? That's such an important series. Yeah, exactly. But we do have a question from the chat here. Caffeinated Wolf. I believe this is the creative director of the Ripperverse. Heidi Ho. Uh, where is Spencer? Asked Caffeinated Wolf. I believe he's working on stories for uh, Bounding Into Comics. He doesn't appear on the Tokyo Happy Hour very often. I believe he'll be around for the Tokusatsu discussion anyway, if not more episodes. We had Jacob on before, but usually it's Nerdigans and I talking about the anime tragedies and triumphs of the week. <laughs> but, I mean, I just don't yeah, understand. Dot Hack, Aquarian. Yep. Black Attack Butler. On Titan? It's weird oh. with Black Butler in particular because the right. new season is starting and it's on Crunchyroll. It, it, it's so it's it really again Crunchyroll genius. Like these galaxy brains we're dealing with over there that just don't like grab this stuff, you know. <laughs> well, I have to wonder in the case of Code Geass if it has anything to do with um, with Disney having the next entry of uh, Kogios. Yeah, that's right, because that screwed up the Hulk licensing with Universal. Mm -hmm. That's right, yeah. You know what, that's probably, like, there's a Dragon Ball Z movie, the special history of Trunks currently doesn't have a home. This is insane. Well, Like, I would have been a lawyer fighting in a courtroom. I would have been screaming at the judge, for the love of God, we have to find them a home. Have well, you no yeah. heart? Well, for the Dragon Ball movies, it looks like it's only the sub that's available, which is what you really want is the sub. Because <laughs> the dub, um, as um, as a translator has been posting, like they did some gay erasure for General Blue in the dub. And Krillin called him a, a flaming homo, and that's not in the dub either. <laughs> uh, Nerdigans, is this list okay to, to share out? Um, Yeah, it's fine. All right, if you would like to review the list independently, the link is in the chat, uh, just a few seconds now. It'll be yeah, there I'll for post, you. I'm gonna include the link when I uh, cover the story. Right, and uh, feel free to go through, find your favorites, and let everyone on the internet know that some psychopath at Crunchyroll decided not to scoop all of this up, even if it meant signing in blood. Even if it meant, si look it's at all the galaxy crazy. angel they left. There's so much merch they could they could merch that it could be a whole new hot topic tidal wave of just line art t-shirts all over again with with galaxy angel but no no it's homeless homeless well perini said he wants to focus on the streaming service but you're getting rid of getting rid of content and he's from what i remember he said he does is not focusing obviously on movies which irritates me but at the same time it's like shop factory got um a uh, really sick uh, slam dunk first slam dunk Blu-ray release and Digimon uh, to the beginning is getting a really nice Shout Factory um, release as well. So, Ad admittedly, no one needed Gundam Bill Divers. I mean, that's okay. You can leave that <laughs> kitten in the box. That's fine. That's all right. Gurren Lagann surprises me though. Like that's got everything. It's not that's for got Big Titty Anime Girl. That's got Big Titty Anime Girl. That's got, uh, I got stuck on Big Titty Anime Girl. Uh, giant Robots, <laughs> of course, Giant Robots. But yeah, and girl, but Destiny. yeah, the, the dub didn't make it, the, which I'm very surprised about. It's so weird. Again, and I don't Disney know must be meddling in do, this. I don't know if it has anything to do with license agreements, which it probably could well be, or, you know, it's like the Funimation um, uh, digital copies were not able to transfer to Crunchyroll. It could be that, but luckily, like some of the uh, titles there are available on other streaming services like Hulu and Netflix, and uh, um, I think Disney. Well, Disney Plus Star, and for anyone outside of the U.S., but. Uh, the DBZ movies are great. Like even if they're not canon, like the Brawley movies, they are so oh, yeah, good. Like. Good. It's uh, the Brawley movie. The first two Brawley movies were not like canon at all, but 
Man, I the first one you can't stay off the edge of your seat. Like every, you you it's pretty close where Goku almost gets killed. Like I don't know who the director was, but he wanted to beat the hell out of Goku. He just, just wanted to see that too. guy get beat up. Well, there's Dead Zone that's really good cuz oh, Dead Zone yeah, it's right. into the continuity. That's right. And and that's where Gohan really gets Yeah, we saw it. Gohan and Piccolo. And Bojack. Oh yeah, Bo Bojack is like oh, Bojack has got to be my favorite out of all of them. Is Bojack because I, like I seeing, still love, I still I love like the uh, Team Four Star version of him where he's just screaming at King Kai from inside the planet like, "Go, oh, let me free one of these days." I love it. I love. Shut up, Bojack. I love it. <laughs> Outlaw Star. Oh gosh. Yeah. The, Does that? Why? Oh, both of them aren't available. Are you kidding me? Like that could have been the next, uh, the next Overwatch skin fiasco. They could have yeah. done like uh, uh, a. Star's a classic too. And it's it's got a beautiful OST, a beautiful mm -hmm. OST. Yes, uh, caffeinated uh, wolf. You're right. Disney has the license to code Geass, and they're releasing the uh, at least a sub and dub version of a new animation, new anime that uh, reboots. Yeah, reboots the universe. Oh yeah, someone pointed out Outlaw Stars on Hulu. Yeah, some of these titles, as I said, I have to go through all of them. But I, some of the titles are available on other streaming services. But there's other titles like Astro Boy, for example, can't find it anywhere. Um, mm. There's and the heroic Legend of Aslan gone, can't find it anywhere. So it's really, it's just really sad to see this. And yeah, just keep crazy. thinking Perini's going to destroy this company anyway, especially with G Kids stepping up with uh, the theatrical releases. Wow, that's amazing. Soul Look Leader, Steins Gate, Street Fighter, Assassin's Fist, like uh, Tenchi Muyo, Rio yeah. Oki, One, Two, Three. Oh boy, Tenchi Muyo Universe, the whole thing. They hate Tenchi Muyo. Tenshi Muyo was so good. It was one of my first anime too. I I had it so bad for Ryoko, dude. Oh, I had it so bad for Ryoko. <laughs> I Ryoko's wanted to be fine. taken by a space pirate, man. I wanted to go flying away in the Cabot spaceship. I wanted a little bunny rabbit that could cruise the galaxy and shoot lasers out of its ears. <laughs> it's not fair. Oh, the disastrous life of Saki. Oh, that that anime is so freaking funny. Oh God! It and the Slayers is being gone is gone too. Escaflone, man. These who are these people making these decisions? They need to be slapped like repeatedly in comedic style. Chronicle. Oh, Subasa Reservoir Chronicle is is amazing. I love that manga so much. I'm oh, Clamp needs to come back and finish that one too. I know we got finished Triple X Holic um, Ray. But man, Subasa Reservoir Chronicles is really, really good. Amazing. This is this is something that what, what we need to what you need to absorb from this is that these are all things that were lost in the Funimation drop. These were things that that lawyers and people who manage these things. There's there's whole departments that are dedicated to managing what these things are doing where they legally belong. They hire teams of lawyers that do nothing but track the licensing statuses of all of this. And somehow, some knuckle dragon weirdo let almost 200 of these properties just, whoops. And there's Ghost Maggie in the gone shell. too. Maggie's so good. Gunslinger Girl 2? I didn't know there was a two. I don't even know about number one. Gosh. Yeah, exactly. See, the, see, Caffeinated Wolf says here, Outlaw Star was highly underrated when it was airing on Toonami to Midnight Run. Everyone was too focused on Trigun and Inuyasha, but Cowboy Bebop and Outlaw Star were much... Exactly. See, this, yeah. they, they honed in on this lost generation kind of thing. It hadn't emerged fully in Japan yet, but it was these people that were stuck in the transient worker situation. Whatever had happened in their lives, they weren't able to obtain their dreams, and so they were stuck living with broken dreams. Mm -hmm. And it just, as a teenager, that just get, oh, it just reaches into the angst buttons and pushes all of them. Well, yeah, and 
Well, obviously, we all um, back in the tsunami days, we had like the Yu Yu Hakusho and the Roroni Kenshin. I'm surprised. Mm-hmm. I am surprised that Roroni Kenshin. It, I th- think it's still on Crunchyroll. I'm surprised Roroni Kenshin is still on there, based off of um, the uh, well, you know, the mangaka went to jail. Watsuki went to jail. But well, in the West, that appeals to their sensibilities. The corporations no, like, like no, that. No, the Western <laughs> manga community um, does not like Watsuki and will refuse to read Roroni Kenshin because of um, what happened. I'm talking about Disney. That's, oh, you're talking that's about Disney. Talking about. <laughs> yeah. Not the people but, with honor, you know? Yeah, but Roroni Kenshin is so good. If you get the chance to read the first one and um, uh, Hokkaido arc, Oh, Hokkaido arc has just been mm. so good. There's been like arcs on the economy. Um, there's been arcs on um, on weapons, on, you know, and Kenshin's not in a good chunk of it either, which makes well, it even more interesting. You get to know the rest of the cast a lot better. Yeah, and, and you know, this again, like what I'm surprised, right, on this list that we were looking at here, I just want to double check before I shoot my mouth off and say something that isn't correct. B, 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 B. Okay, cool. It surprises me that Big O is not on this list. Out of all the heavy hitters that we saw on here, somehow somebody out there was like, oh no, this obscure near Batman giant robot anime with all the jazz is the one we really need to make sure that we track the licensing on. It's amazing how they <laughs> chose it. I love it, but it's so I strange. Do. Like Black Butler, fuck that shit. I need to make sure that Roger Smith is front and center on this deal. <laughs> <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> Dude, this world is crazy. This timeline is nuts. I it mean, really I is. married Hatsume Miku um, is on Twitter now. I didn't think that would ever happen, but yeah, he's on Twitter. Yeah, Asia Clan Can and Mitsako Kutsuragi. Absolutely. Absolutely, man. Like, great taste. Mwah, chef's kiss. Excellent taste. Asia Clan Can was hilarious. I, I I love the fact that nothing would go right for her. I just that was just so so great. <laughs> but uh, as you can see here with the title, 192 anime titles left without a streaming home after Funimation website shuts down. That's where it's at right there. Black Butler, yeah. of course, leading the top here. As <laughs> it seems, Anime Senpai was just as shocked as we were. Yeah, April second, man. That's when Funimation died and. A bunch of other anime apparently died too. But this is why, this is why you see all the high seas. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I have no sympathy for Funimation. They were caught redubbing things with political agenda. Granted, the people who did that still have a job, but the corporation that housed them is gone now. And then, of course, I was pro Vic. So this yeah, is Vic a bit cathartic. Slower. Right, this is a bit cathartic to see the company that did him in go before his career did. So that's yeah. uh, that's a bit cathartic. What are you looking at me for, cat? What's uh, ADV? Anime oh, direct I video? I think it's uh, um, for uh, for the English dubs. The uh, oh. that's what it is. Okay. If you want to clarify, caffeinated wool, feel free to. Yeah, Mr. Popo's secret ointment. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, as, as we showed you the list here, there's quite a few anime that have been left in the dust on this one, and their futures are currently up in the, up in the you know. Well, you got to hope that um, uh, Sony does the, like a Warner Archives kind of thing, um, like they're doing with uh, the Powerpuff Girls. And See, I just... I just don't believe that they're gonna. They're so threatened by anime. This all this feels a little bit no, like the, a deliberate. Well, the right? archive, yeah, Warner Archives is releasing um, the full series on DVD, and it's getting a really nice release too, with documentaries and everything. Mm. I wish we would. I wish Sony would be doing that for um, for anime. That would be nice. Because Sony that's... has Sony has the license for the home video releases. I, I think Hollywood's just too threatened for it. Honestly, this collapse here with all these strange licensing hiccups, it really feels like an effort to handicap people who don't want to get into the subs. And then they brought out and like took a bat to almost everything that was on Toonami. 
So it feels like anything that was previously comfortable for Westerners to get their toes wet with anime on is now out of their reach. It seems awfully deliberate. And once again, I just have to point out, anime is still talking to you about tradition, honor, and standing up for your beliefs, which are things that the West has a problem with currently. Yeah, sadly. You can't so be yourself anymore. We went to, yeah. from being yourself to you have to be conformed to a flock. That's how it's been in the West. It's really, really sad. And speaking of conforming, we do have the Crunchyroll leaks. Oh, yeah. So the Crunchyroll leaks, people were talking about it. But here's the thing. And it was, I'm glad it was pointed out on um, CBR and other uh, people on Twitter pointed out, too. When you get early releases like at um, like SakuraCon or where do we go uh, Comic Con like this? Um, yeah, they tend to go up on pirate sites like really, mm. really fast. This happens all the time. So when people are saying, "Oh, Crunchy Rolly," crunch, no, 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 this happens all the time. <laughs> mm. This isn't a special thing. No, no, no. But yeah, um, anything that got like a uh, early screening, like Sandy Phonium season three, Data Live, um, Konosuba, yeah, that those are on the pirate sites right now. I'm not surprised. And I don't think any any of you, well, anyone who's been in the anime community for a long time, especially the online anime community, should know this by now. <laughs> well, again, like, if, if it exists, it's on the internet. You know, I know there's another certain rule that I'm sure some friends in our chat are, are aware of out there about another certain thing that exists. But this, in this case, if it is on the internet, odds are it's been pirated. So even yeah. if it was free, it's been pirated. So <laughs> it's it's one of those yeah, things. Yeah, people were just flipping the fuck out. And like even some YouTubers, I, I, I got a feeling they were just doing it. Um, they were just grifting off it to make extra money. But yeah, some anim, anti-tubers were like, um, were surprised by it. I'm like, bro, you should not be surprised by this. <laughs> you should not be surprised at all. You've been in this community long enough to know that this happens all the time. So Caffeinated Wolf clarifies that AD Vision Holdings Inc. Incorporated is uh, ADV and was an entertainment distributor based out of Houston. And there were a lot of anime that were only available dubbed through them. Mm. So that's interesting. Apparently Dirty Flash was among uh, uh, his favorites to come out of that uh, organization. So they could be another group of people that are involved in this licensing fiasco. It, that it could, yeah, it could. Could be. Um, and that could explain why some of the uh, anime only have subs available. But man, just a part of me really feels like that it's a combination of that and um, and Funimation not be or Crunchyroll not supporting like Funimation uh, digital copies. It feel like that has to come into play as well. And then people pirate things. What a surprise! Hmm. Yep. Oh, they've been defunct since 2009, so that means that their licensing passed on to someone else. So you hear again, another compounded problem. Yeah. NGE was released through... Yeah, okay. All right. Wow, that's a long time ago. Man. Mm -hmm. Man, yeah, it's you... crazy that, like, doesn't 2009 seem like yesterday or 2008 seem like yesterday even? No. I was graduating high school in 2008, so it feels very distant to me. I graduated in 2007. <laughs> yeah, so it feels very distant for me. I That's an entirely different life in my book. <laughs> but, <laughs> oh, yeah, Pioneer. I forgot about them. But, yeah, they're, they're yeah, debunked. Yep, yep. Yeah, too, too, not too many made it through. Is, he, is Ocean still around even? I think Ocean is still, yeah, Ocean is still around in Canada. Ah, Right. Of our good friends in Vancouver that voice everything else. Man, yep. there was that one guy who did the voice of uh, Domon Kashu. And then he then he went off to be a chiropractor and he never <laughs> he never voiced a thing again. And he just did, oh gosh, it makes me so mad. Like every now and then I'm like, for the Gundam 50th anniversary, they gotta go to that guy and be like, look, we'll give you ten million dollars to say the thing. You know? This hand of mine is burning red. Just say the line, dude. You can go back to pushing people's backs in later. Just say the line. I know. Oh, well. Will we get it at some point? Nah, damn it. 
But again, the Crunchyroll leaks, back to this over here, the Crunchyroll leaks really shouldn't come as a surprise to anyone but boomers who don't know how the internet functioned since the 90s when you had to have the telephone number of the websites you wanted to connect with. If there was information to be had, it was being trafficked. Well, I would say mainstream anime fans don't know either because some of them are still um, actually using Crunchyroll and they're not pirating. <laughs> Oh, oh well, paranoia agent. That would mean that its licensing is secured. Tell him we would want it, we would want that. We do not want these things to be up in the air like poor no. outlaw star that had didn't deserve this at all. Or Astro Boy for that matter. That's true. Astro Boy, like the thing is, and it frustrates me is a lot of these mainstream anime fans they don't know about Astro Boy. They don't know about like Gigantor or any of the other series that you know Cartoon Network. They have no idea. Or that the cutscenes uh, for uh, Mega Man uh, with Sigma there, uh, Mega Man X, that makes a movie. They have no idea that that's an OVA. That's not like just cutscenes in the video game that were just oh. really well done. <laughs> they don't even know about Gunslinger Girls, Nerdigans. They don't it's even sad. know about Gunslinger Girls. They don't know about Slayers either. Ah, kills me. <laughs> it, it kills me. It, uh, it's sad. I mean, we had our anime education thanks to Cartoon Network and Kids TV. Yes. A lot of <laughs> experimentation Fox. then. Yes. Yeah, and Jetix too. We we got a, we got an anime education, especially when Cartoon Network was airing um, classic anime like at four or five in the morning. <laughs> yeah, I would have never have ever have watched a single minute of Witch Hunter Robin, like had it not been for Toonami. That would have been like a no-no from my entire purview. And thanks well, to I mean, them, at, I sat through a whole people, episode. Well, look at how many people um, were introduced to Gundam through Toonami. Hi, me. Yes, yep. Gundam Wing, still the best thing. Zex Marquis is my spirit animal. <laughs> <laughs> but speaking of Gundam, um, Space Battleship uh, Yamato's 50th anniversary is upon us. It's on October 6th. And um, that series, I was writing the article about it, um, actually did influence Macross, Gundam, and Evangelion. So it does make sense for Hideki Anno to, uh, um, to help I the project. We'll find that in the pile of stuff you sent me. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. Um, so... As I said, this year, Battlestar um, Space Battleship Yamato is at its 50th anniversary. It came out in 1974. So it, it's it's hard to believe that series Here like this go. started back then. Yeah. So, and um, Hideka Ano, like he is running, he's running the program. And there's like a few books that are supposed to be coming as well as like a screening for um, um, Space Battleship Yamato and uh, there's a colored uh, manga that's supposed to be happening as well. What wow. colored? Mm hmm. Wow. That. And then there's an seems... exhibition as well too. But that's good. I'm glad they're doing that. But this, what what really caught my eye about this is Hidekiano. Like that. That tells me what their goal with this is going to be. That they're going to go like this really action oriented. Yamato. They're going to go hard in with the like probably the soaring um, music, a lot of the interpersonal drama and characters going through like the situational uh, confrontation with what they're dealing with. And then also one of my favorite parts of Evangelion was when everybody's got their headsets and they're yelling to each other when they're two feet away from one another. <laughs> well, I, my chair is touching yours. We need the thing! Sign the thing! <laughs> you know? <laughs> I, I miss that. I love it. But yeah, Hideki Anno, if you scroll down, it um, he actually said this in 2013 on how um, uh, Space Battleship Yamato influenced his career, that he wouldn't be, his career would be completely different if it wasn't for uh, Space Battleship Yamato. Oops. Yeah, he talked about that. Yeah, it's a few interviews that he's even said this. Yep. I says, I don't think my life would be the same if I hadn't met Space Battleship Yamato. The opening picture and song right after it starts are so cool. I was paralyzed by the opening of the main title and the movement of Yamato as the camera pulls away from the captain's cabin, which is directly connected to it, gripping my heart, and I still feel that way to this day. Yep. That's a weeb right there. Look at that. Such a weeb. <laughs> 
<laughs> fella. Jeez. But yeah, that's that what this is really good because like again, this fella understands the the emotion behind action. One of the things that annoys me recently is uh Bravern that came out. I'm a Mecha guy. I like Mecha. I don't like when Mecha wants to have sex with its pilot. I don't like that. <laughs> that's not Sorry. It's so over the top, like, yeah. But anyway, the the situation with, with Bravern is, is that the action is simply there as a buffer between all of the implied sex. And I, it annoys me because when Hideki used, used action, it was emotional. It was raw. When, when Shinji or Asuka, Asuka or Rei had to get into a fight fight and they couldn't just shoot something from miles away, like that was real deal 12 year olds fighting for their lives stuff. It wasn't here comes the cool intro music again and a rainbow fire blast out of my belly button. It, it wasn't <laughs> it, it, it was like the spirit of Shinji's mom resurrecting to protect him at like 130 feet tall. <laughs> it's like it, regrowing its arm even. Like this is like the, the little kid brain was like, what am I looking at? So as he's describing what his experience with Yamato was, I'm going back through how horrified I was with, with Evangelion. And I'm like, okay, dude, you've earned it. You're definitely the guy to handle Yamato. Well, I mean, it says here he's been a fan for of Yamato for 49 years since um, his second year of junior high school. Like, you have a dedicated fan right there that's going to take good care of this project. And I'm, I really wish more, more like anniversary projects were um, handled like this. Okay, uh, uh, just a quick thing. I got confused, but I want to clarify what I'm highlighting. Apparently, there's a blue, 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 blue ray release of Dirty Pair coming out. So, oh, sorry yeah, about that, that. I think Dirty Pair was um, that Blu ray, and I think it was the dub in particular, was crowdfunded. Um, and this was before, um, oh God, when was it? It was actually it was like not too long ago when I saw it. I think it was like last year was when I um, when I saw it. Well, but our Vita points out the Super Dimension Fortress Macross. Do you remember love is the hashtag best movie ever made? Well, I don't know about that, but they felt it was so good. They could not bring it over to Hulu slash Disney Plus. So it's just that nope. good that it can't yeah. be seen by Americans legally. All right, the Japanese have to keep their secrets. It'll have to remain at the bottom of the bargain bin at the, the conventions you go to with somebody doing a dub in, you know, their basement. But, uh, <laughs> well, luckily there's well, basement dubs too. were hot. Were so hot, dude. Like, I remember sitting in, like, the convention center and, like, there's just some guy you can clearly tell he's, like, using a Logitech webcam microphone in his closet. And, and it's like... <laughs> You, but you can feel the passion. That's the thing. Yeah. He's trying to make it through, and he like barely speaks Japanese. Like he got like one of those Japanese on tape things, and he's like doing <laughs> his best. It's like I think this is what they're doing now. You can hear that in his voice when he's delivering the lines. I'm like, oh, you. I'll never do this, but you. I admire your bravery, sir. And that's what I hear in in uh, Hideki Yamato's talking about this. Like I, he probably did like Yamato role plays when he was a little kid. I could totally see it. I mean, he sacrificed watching Mazinger for, for Yamato. That says a lot, because Mazinger's yeah. really good. Well, and it was huge in the time he was growing up. The super robot genre was king of Saturday. And then, well, obviously, you saw, Macro as I said, Macross and uh, Gundam were influenced by, by mm -hmm. Yamato. Yep. And that, that's something that like a lot of um, modern anime fans don't understand. They think everything is was... Um, created thanks to like Naruto or Dragon Ball. And yeah, Dragon Ball did play a lot, but like when I see people saying, oh, it's um, Naruto did this, this, and this, One Piece did this, this, and this. It's like, yeah, but there is serious that influenced them. Mm -hmm. Well, again, I mean, you're dealing with people because the US doesn't, 
our entertainment is petrified of anime, so they keep a wall up around it. Like, this is very nice. We like to monetize it, but we're going to keep it in the back corner of Hot Topic. We're going to keep it in the back corner of the video store. We're going to keep it in the back corner of Walmart. This is very nice. Thank you. They're, they're petrified of it. But if we embraced it just a twinge more, just a little bit more, people in America would be excited about Battleship Yamato. By now, the U.S. would have embraced the concept and said, why haven't we made a movie series about a U.S. battleship in space? But, but because we're afraid of this, we won't go that far. You can't tell me that the American Transformers audience, the guys that loved Michael Bay's thing, the guys that loved the battleship movie with the drifting Omaha, you know, they, they you can't tell me that they wouldn't enjoy a space battleship Yamato with like, uh, you know, one of the American ships. I think, Omaha, one of the Yamado, you know? I think one of the Yamato movies came out um, because of Star, not just the original success, but because of Star Wars, too. Like, people need to understand, too, Star Wars influenced anime a lot and influenced yes. the sci fi uh, genre a lot. I mean, look yeah. at um, the director of Godzilla Minus One, he was influenced by Star Wars. He flat out said it when he got his Oscar. Yeah, and you have uh, Tenchi Muyo. We were talking about Tenchi earlier, and his he has a laser sword that's basically a lightsaber. Like, oh, <laughs> it's uh, never mind. It's so obvious they acknowledged it in one of the DVD covers. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's Star Wars. That's a Star Wars cover right there. Absolutely, that's a Star Wars poster, and they they made no effort to hide it. So that they go, anime acknowledges where its roots are. It's the U.S. that's so petrified of acknowledging, like, yeah, what are those moon speaking uh, cartoons from Japan with the tentacles gave us the idea for the flying spaceship, flying ba battleship spaceship? Yeah, they can't do that. They can't be a person that says. You know, this giant robot show, Gigantor, we should do something with America like that. Can we put a cowboy hat on a giant robot and have him rescue the Statue <laughs> of Liberty? Can we do that? You know, like, there's, they, they, can't, they just can't dream like that. They're like, no, we got to make sure that it's barely distinguishable from a pile of metal just hurling itself around and belching all kind of chemicals at the face, at the camera. I, oh, I hate it so much, Nerd Again. But then there's, so then, much. oh. Then there's the McDonald's version of um, yep. of the space genre. Oh my god, I, I looked at that manga and <laughs> so cringy. It is so cringy. It's not even funny. Oh yeah, my god, it's the Whack Donalds. Yeah, and, the McDonald's uh, um, manga. Like all, um, yeah, it's four chapters, and all of them are on uh, manga decks. And it's just, it's, it's insane. It's so cringy. So in order to avoid getting in trouble with McDonald's, I'm just, I've changed the speed on this and muted it, but look, it's, yeah. it's already be over the top. It's That's already, okay. this is what anime looks like. My grandson said that this is what anime is. Oh, I hate it so much. I mean, oh, bless you, Key. But <laughs> it's just so, oh God, the manga is even more cringy. <laughs> It, it, I, I don't doubt it. Like, I think it's like um, the third episode is the um is the space is when they go into space and like they're it's like very Voltron meets um oh what part of me wants to say Power Rangers but that doesn't feel right but yeah it's very very Voltron esque. I don't know if it's on there or not. I could always pull up the uh, um the McDonald's uh um. Manga. I got it right here. Oh, you got it. No, it's just the it's this is the one where they're in space. I have it muted. Yeah. They're doing their the Nuggets thing, and then a giant yeah. monster attacks. <laughs> the, one the manga looks better. Yeah. <laughs> See how it's like very yeah. Voltron uh, Power yeah. Rangers esque. Yeah, it's a little bit of Gridman in there too. Yeah, a little bit of uh, Gal Guy Gar. That's what it looks like. It's Gal Guy Gar. That's what it reminds me of. <laughs> Why is McDonald's making anime now? Because they want, but because they saw uh, people were liking the Japanese um, yeah. McDonald's commercials, and those have way more heart in them. Well, they have a point. Yeah, you know, this doesn't have a point. It's like nuggets at like <laughs> you know fifteen octaves in your face. You want nuggets, whereas the the Japanese one is like here's a picture of a family enjoying uh, McDonald's with some nice lo-fi in the background. Don't you feel warm inside? 
McNuggets will make you feel warm inside. Please have children. You know, and <laughs> over here in the West, we're like, have you cut your penis off yet? Enjoy McNuggets after you've cut your penis off. Oh, yeah. And then I think it's the second one where you see like the cringy um, uh, in a rate. It's I know it's probably racist for me to say it, but it's a really cringy interracial dating scene. And it's so oh, my God, it's so cringe. I just I, I can't. <laughs> it's so bad. Uh, oh, yeah, that's okay. the one right there. Yep. But yep. yeah, I already hate it. I already hate it. It's not because of that. It's just the color palette annoys the hell the out of me. The palette is so bad. It really is. And it's all because of nuggets. They, it's... All, for the, all for the sauce. She dropped the nugget. No, that's a sin. You can't she touch them the now. Nugget. They're all covered in sauce. This is awful. Dude, the dub is so cringy, though. But there's why is Bear McCheese working at McDonald's? It's so wrong. That was, it was a that similar was, time back in the 90s, wasn't it? Where we had Ron McDonald and we had Grimace and we had um, the, the hamburger. hamburger. Yeah. And then the girl, the ducky, right? Ducky yeah. was the girl. Yeah. yeah. God, I don't know why I remember that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I it forget my birthday time. sometimes, but I remember that. What has corporate America done to me? <laughs> well, it was a simpler time, and it was a better time when we had actual good commercials. I guess. We didn't have nonsense like this. But yeah, Hamburglar is apparently their manager, and this is quite an array of uniforms well, no, that's that you Mayor can wear McCheese. to McDonald's. Well, that's Mayor McCheese. That's oh, yeah. The Mayor McCheese there. He's like the manager there. And uh, they're all very excited that these two teenagers have fallen in love it's, but, I told uh, you, it's cringy it is it's really bad because it you know what it really reminds me of it reminds me of uh like somebody's attempt to parody the daft punk music videos that they made oh yeah the interstellar 555 stuff it feels yeah. like an attempt to parody that because um uh <laughs> it's just a so by <laughs> yeah the uh <laughs> Yeah, getting fired by a hamburger head. Yeah, like, we're sorry, we gotta let you go. Uh, I'm sorry, you're getting pickle juice on me while you're firing me, sir? Could you <laughs> just slow down a little bit? The double is a part-timer is superior. I heard that the anime didn't do a good job adapting um, the source material. But this has all the hallmarks of, like, one of those new grounds, like, you know, Daft Punk parodies. Like, there's something about us would be playing in the background here. While the two yeah. blue characters are like, just, you know, it's, eating it's a raw so chicken. <laughs> corporate and cringy. Yep. Like, we've seen yeah. better anime, like commercial anime. There's better yeah, ones. I, this, I don't even know what they're saying. I don't even know what the music is. Just looking at this, I can feel that nobody involved was really happy with it. They just kind of were like, okay, we got to do this. Let's get it done. And that it's, it's what really kills a lot of modern anime because you can feel that when the energy is zapped out of the creative team. Oh, yeah. And you can feel that in these. Yeah, because anime has become more um, more corporate. Yep. And um, there's a really good series called Hitman by Sia Koji, who's doing God's Cafe Terrace now. And um, they showed, like, the manga to anime adaptation process. And, man, did it explain a lot. It explained, like, how anime is very corporate now and they're so focused on getting all these products out and they'll compromise a character design to appeal to a wider audience it's it's really it's really sad it looks well, like a new character sad. exactly they, they can't have a family that what you got to notice here is that even with these two being like like finding love and stuff like that they're not but they're, they're, they're apparently under some kind of love spell that's in mm -hmm. these chicken nuggets. Because that's totally, you're not, you're not seeing any connection between the two of them. You're seeing them bonding over chicken nuggets. Whereas before, the family that we saw in the Japanese ad were united. They were already united and joining, enjoying a dinner. You could tell. We, uh, let me just see if I can find it. Uh, but there's Japanese also, um, family. Well, there's also the ones where they show them with, uh, with friends, too. And it's just yeah. friends chilling. Right, and so this. Look at that. Uh, okay, well, we're gonna get interrupted by the American ad somewhere around here. 
Um, yeah, okay. So we got a few minutes. So again, I won't be playing the music, but you just look at this. See the difference? Now, I know, again, they're trying to show you a couple falling in love in the, in the American version. That is different. I'm making hand gestures like it matters. Anyway, um, you, uh, you can see that, that in that one that they're not like together, but they don't have a bond. The characters we saw in America don't have a bond, so they're just falling in love because they both love chicken nuggets, which is stupid. That's corporate and plastic, and I'm going to marry you because you like the same nuggies I do. <laughs> You know, but you've got you've got this right here where you've got a loving family that already has a bond. It's quite obvious that they care about each other. And McDonald's is something they're choosing to have quiet time with. You see, they're not yeah. talking. Well, that's what it used to be back in the 90s, too. It was mm -hmm. all about all about family going to McDonald's as a family. But they don't have the play structures anymore because lawsuits i think <laughs> well you know they static really i think there were probably a lot of kids that burned up in those i remember at least one of them lighting on fire because of the static oh, really? in there yeah <laughs> yeah but man like those were the days when you could get like a 29 cent hamburger or a 39 cent cheeseburger like on wednesdays god damn it now i'm thinking of that rap by time i show <laughs> I'm so yeah stupid. Yeah. Well, I, Liam Mason here, he says, uh, oh, that's the one Americans mm -hmm. had a problem with. You're right. Yes. Because again, they felt threatened. They look at that and they're like, I can't have that because I can't accept another human being being around me that long, apparently. Well, so, they don't like gingers either, but I mean. <sighs> so annoying. <laughs> but yeah, wholesome and understandable too. Yeah, it's almost like the Japanese, uh, you know, spend like years and years and years in college studying how to exploit human emotion like this. It's it's one of those things like, I'm sorry, our little brother Japan learned how to do what we do much better. And we got yeah, up our game if we're going to compete. Yeah, they yeah. were inspired by Disney. If it wasn't yeah. for Disney, anime wouldn't exist. Yeah. Well, some would exist, but you know. Well, and now that we have that out of the way, we should probably move into ta -da, the 2024 yeah. spring anime list is out, guys. It starts on the 8th. Well, it started actually earlier than that. It started on the um, the 4th, technically. We it started on the 4th, technically, which is well, what yeah. I totally actually, said I'm the sorry, first April time. 2nd. There, there's <laughs> April 2nd. There's a couple 2nd. April 2nd. There we go. I was like, <laughs> wait a minute. It did not sound right. But yeah, there's, um, it's... The first one started on March 30th and there's been like one or two coming, or there was three or four. No, there was at least six that came out on April 1st. And that includes um, the new spice and wolf uh, reboot. Um, and there's a controversial uh, isekai that, um, that started as well. Dun, dun, um, dun. <laughs> and it's uh i was reincarnated as the seventh prince so i could take my time perfecting my magical ability yeah um one of the characters the kid character they're saying that um the studio had the balls to make um the kid have like really thick thighs that's <laughs> oh yeah huh okay well that that's a thing you know japan they do what they do i guess but yeah. uh <laughs> so but, um but the one that, that caught my eye that's come out this past week, um, it actually came out today, was um, was Windbreaker. Um, Windbreak, there's a manga Windbreaker and there's a manga Windbreaker. The Windbreaker manga is, the best way to describe it, is Tokyo Revengers done right. It is just so good. I love the manga. If you are a Tokyo Revengers fan, go read it. You will you will definitely appreciate it. But man, the, the opening song that came out for it was and I sent you the link for that. It's just so yep. beautiful. That whole sequence is fantastic. Cloverworks Oops, really did a beautiful job. The song is great. Yep, and here it is. I've turned down the volume a little bit here, so you have to bear with me, but here you go. Uh, we'll have to pause it a couple times because the stream may get taken down if we let it play through, so. Well, yeah, and I'll, I'll explain like characters and stuff like that, but yeah. Oh, God, I love this. Well done. It's, it's so pretty. Yeah, when they're putting on their jackets like that, that's on the mm -hmm. manga cover. That's oh, like okay. the back of the manga cover, basically. Because like in the front, you see them like with their jackets and they're posing with their jacket on. And mm. then, yeah, I, I really like that little touch.
Uh, oh, uh, in case you don't know, uh, a lot of Americans don't realize this. Um, the tomato. Um, there it is. Well, yeah, he has a tomato. The um, uh, oh God. Uh, the uh, uh, that's uh, Hajime uh, Umamiya. He's the one that runs the school for the most part. But yeah, he grows tomatoes up on uh, <laughs> on the roof of the school. So the tomato over there is treated like a fruit. It is not uh, typically like a vegetable. It's treat. It's also used like it, but it is not treated like you. They pick them up and eat them like apples over there. So you see uh, tomatoes show up a lot in anime. The Japanese don't have like a special af af like affinity for them. It's just they're like a fruit, and and it's it's a symbolic fruit because it has like a kind of like a, a, a fertility quality to it. So and uh, you know so that's that's. That's why you see it a lot. It, it, I'm sorry. It's just always bizarre because I, I remember growing up when we were watching Big O, you know, and, and tomatoes yeah. kept coming up. And it's like, what is going on with this tomato thing? Speaking of, that tomato looks good. Look at the shading and everything. Oh, it's just Japanese cool. food porn. It's not what you think. It's not. <laughs> God, look how beautiful this movement is, too. I love what mm -hmm. they're doing. How they transition to the town, into the school. That's the main character, Sakura. And um, Sakura is like the outsider. He's coming into the town and um, he realizes uh, his purpose because he's been, sh because of his hair, he's been shunned um, and exercised, and, mm -hmm. you know, and ostracized. And he is so badass, man. He, I don't know where he gets the strength from, but man, it is badass as hell. Well, you'll have to wait and find out. Yeah, those are the rest of the kids in um, in his class. Um, so the one with the eye patch, that is uh, Hayato Suo, who is, he is freaking hilarious. <laughs> and then um, the one that's on screen now is, uh, um, is Akihiko uh, Nire, and he... He doesn't have any strength. He is like the weakest out of all of them, but he's that that kid that gets all the information down, kind of like in um, oh god, in uh, uh, Weak Hero. There's a manga called Weak Hero that's very much like this in a way, um, where oh. they um, where you have um, uh, like an app that um, that uh, documents all the rankings of the different um, fighters and everything like that. That's what he he's basically doing. Well, and uh, apparently, you know, that's a formula that works. Yeah, it does. Weak Hero is amazing. Okay, so that is the restaurant that they hang out in all the time. And, like, <laughs> I love seeing them animated like this. You have no idea. They really captured the art style perfectly. But yeah, that was it. when we saw those shadows. Yeah, that was, you know, Sakura walking away from like all those that like hated him and stuff like that, which mm. I thought was smart. But yeah, here you have, um, uh, you have Sukashita, who, Sukashita is. So uh, who, which side? Left? On this left one here, right, right there. One in the center. The one in the center, the center. is Sukashita. Okay. He is badass as hell, but goddamn, he, he is very, very stubborn. And then, um, the one on the right is Kiryu, um, Mitsuki Kiryu. He is adorable as hell, and he's hmm. a pimp. He's getting all the ladies. <laughs> it's that and kind then the of one anime. That's, well, well, the one that's like um, lifting weights is uh, Taiga um, Suguera, and he he is that like mu that kind of muscle head that has to like yeah. drags you into the, their workout. And I know he kind of does give like a Richard Simmons kind of realness. <laughs> <laughs> Real. But, yeah. And that's the game. That's um what because how it works with Windbreaker is each class has their own like they're their own gang kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And um and Sakura ended up being the uh instead of like you know a um uh student council kind of thing, you have different leaders of the class and they're the ones that lead um the class into battle and stuff like that. God, there's the tomato. Yeah, there's the tomatoes growing. 
I think it but represents there, youth. Yeah. I think that's also what it represents is like a, a youth, the, the, the passage from childhood into adulthood, perhaps. I don't know. Like, again, like here in the U.S., we used to think they were poisonous. Thomas Jefferson made it a point to go out into the center square in Monticello, sit down on a fountain and eat a tomato in front of people. And they would stand and wait for him to die. They thought it was a poisonous plant. So it's like over here, we have a vastly different relationship with this red vine thing. Fruit. I mean, look how beautiful that animation is compared to mm -hmm. like some of the stuff we've seen coming out of the West. Like this, that's why I'm on it. And also the song is bad as hell. I love this song. <laughs> Something called passion. We haven't yeah. had here since the nineties. Well, there's some, actually there's some Japanese anime that could use a little bit of that passion too. Oh, yeah, you're going to see lots of fun. Well, this is the Tokyo Revengers done better. <laughs> um, but yeah, the fighting sequences here look just amazing. Oh, and I almost forgot to mention, of course, the whole thing that they do here. This gang is a little bit different because what they do is Farron protects the town. They don't like go cause problems. Nah, they're respected in the town and they protect the town. Yeah, the virtuous. Um, virtuous gangsters. Yakuza. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, what is it my guy said? Oh, youth is an explosion. That's what he said. Youth is an explosion. Yeah. yeah. Oh, they're painting over the graffiti. That's a nice yeah, thing. See, yeah. yeah, they're the heroes. They do everything they can to protect the town. Um, that got Kyle Rittenhouse in trouble. You know that? <laughs> yes, it did. So this anime is about Kyle Rittenhouse. Hey, full circle, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm but kidding. Um, the other thing is, too, is that like you have some of the people in the town. Uh, they give them like um, free stuff, too, because of the stuff that they do. And I, there's also people in the town that work with them, too, to make sure the town's safe. I feel like this is going to get turned into a Kyle Rittenhouse meme. <laughs> like, someone's going to recut yeah, no, this. There's no with guns running away from the mob. Though. No, I know. That's the thing. You, they're going to recut some of this intro with him running from the mob. And <laughs> no. Oh, uh, oh well. It's the it's the painting over the graffiti. I can't be the only one that noticed that parallel. Yeah, that's what they do. Tomatoes. Yeah. Oh, yay. Okay, so you saw, like, in the shadows there, that is um, one of the rival gangs that um, they fight, and it's led by, like, my favorite character in the series, which is um, which is Tomiyama. Oh. He is badass as hell. He's short, but he's badass yeah. as hell. There he is. Yeah, that, that's my boy. That's my boy, Tomiyama. He is the best character in the series. I love him so much. But when it gets to no, a certain point... No, not birth though, control. <laughs> But um, when it gets to a certain point, because there is a um, a crossdresser um, named uh, Subaki, and when the anime gets there, oh god, we're gonna have to deal with the trans stuff. And Subaki straight up says they are not trans; they just like to wear cute things. It's one of those kinds of uh, characters. Oh boy, I can't wait for the adapters to have too much fun with that. <laughs> Oh Food porn. <laughs> I just God. do they eat that many omelets? I just yeah, question they eat there, if they like, eat constantly. that many om. Man, it must because it's like omarice. every meal in anime. They love their omarice, but man, look at that graffiti in the background and the mm -hmm. silhouettes. I mean, it's just, it's so beautiful compared to like a, a lot of stuff um, that's coming out in the West and hell, even in Japan. But I don't have to double check, but I think it's the same team. Some of the people from uh, the uh, My Dress Up Darling team is on this. Oh, yeah. Ah, that's why it's so stylized. This. Yeah. God, the song is so good. Wind chimes are also a big theme in this one, apparently. Are they like some kind mm -hmm. of like battle, like go get them sig signal? Yeah. Like, ah, uh, I think. Kind of, yeah. yeah. Mm 
Yeah, and then the front, when they're facing the front, that's literally how some of their covers look, the manga's covers looks. I, you know, I really, I like how Bleach intro that was. Mm -hmm. There were a lot of, like, Bleach did that colored overlay silhouette thing. It did a bit of the graffiti in some of the intros. Because, uh, you know, because cause Kubo, Kubo had, like, a bunch of, uh, he, he wanted to be a fashion designer, if I remember yeah. right. And so he just put that into all, like, the covers and the chapter uh, title, you know, title pages. And uh, this Windbreaker intro really captures, like, the first seven Bleach intros. I feel, yeah, it does. I feel the fingerprint of those there. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. I, lo I uh, just love seeing the different transitions in this one. And, God, that song is just a banger. It, I like it a lot. It fits it so perfectly. Is Dress Up Darling still going? Um, the first, the manga is going, um, okay. the manga hit a uh, hundred chapters, um, oh. say like a couple months ago, but the wow. anime, the anime's first season of the anime has been done. The sequel anime, we don't know when that's coming out, but wow, that's going to that... have another controversy within itself. Cause Amane, who is a, um, who is a cross-dressing boy is, is going to be introduced and we're going to have the activists go after Amane again, uh, like they've done with the Stoffo and with Bridget and <sighs> that other one in the tall girl, short guy anime there, a lovely complex. Uh, yeah. Lovely complex. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, from good news to bad, from bad news to good news, rather my bad, I got it backwards. There is a new Beyblade anime coming out now. Oh yeah. That's I, the manga. It's the anime right. adaptation of the manga basically. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, and and you know, while this may not sound like thrilling to anybody, it is having a twenty-five year anniversary, and that's chiefly what's pushing this back out into the the public, like global public eye again. And I don't know, I'm kind of excited for a whole new generation of weebs that previously have only had Naruto to gawk over re recently. Now getting a taste of battle tops. <laughs> yeah, and the designs are by um, Promise Neverland uh, Magica uh, Posaka. And that mm -hmm. art is, if you've read The Promised Neverland, you know how beautiful that art is. Yeah, a Beyblade X. Mm -hmm. Beyblade X. Or Beyblade Cross, because the Japanese like to play with the X. Yeah. And uh, so well, it could I be that. I think this is straight up X, though, because of the moves. Oh, it's extreme. That are, there in the yeah. uh, are in the manga. And, like, I mean, you have one of the characters that disguises himself as, like, a common writer kind of thing. So. <laughs> yep. Blader X. Yep. But uh, this this is a it's it's a refreshing thing because um, I, I at first I was like you know this is the heat death of of Japan they're going through the same thing we are this is reboot I have this we reboot Kogias we're gonna reboot Dragon Ball we're gonna reboot Beyblade of all things you know uh, pretty soon we're just gonna get a Beyblade uh, excuse me a, a reboot of Bo 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 Bo, bo. <laughs> I think I got enough bows yeah and, I heard uh, there's a stage play for it but I haven't heard oh. anything about the anime. But it's not bad. It's not a bad one, but it's one of those ones that just, it's perfect. You don't need to mess with it because it's insane. It's supposed to be insane. Don't mess with it. Don't leave it alone. Excuse me, leave it alone. Don't mess with it. It ain't broken. Well, Yu-Gi-Oh! But... hasn't gotten a reboot yet. I kind of... Yu-Gi-Oh! Like, um, I would say that Duel Monsters, or just Yu-Gi-Oh! in general, I should say, definitely needs a redub, period. Yeah. Because the dub voice actors are good. It's just uh, maybe with the exception of like Jaden in um in GX. But like we still haven't gotten like the final GX. season. Yeah, we still haven't gotten the final season of GX dubbed or um or five Ds, the final season of five Ds dubbed because of licensing issues. Well, and now uh, we have Yu-Gi-Oh! Go Rush coming out here in uh well, you know, it began three years ago two years ago but yeah. we do have a new Yu-Gi-Oh series out that's already been out for a while returning again so apparently it doesn't suck that's cool I haven't seen but... Yu-Gi-Oh go rush I've seen V Reigns and I've seen um and Zexel Zexel oh my god Zexel <sighs> don't watch Zexel with the dub don't do it you will hate it so much uh yeah and now um where did it go it's at the at the bottom isn't it probably which one are you Lyla. looking for uh i just wanted to show them uh the the godzilla one there it is the cheapy yeah. godzilla raids again season two now we mentioned this at the top of the show um where did i put it come on now 
There's it's so on many YouTube. of these. You can actually yeah. watch the whole thing on YouTube because they're they're short little yeah. two minute things. Yeah, I, I thought you sent me the link to it. That's the thing. I did. You it's, did, it's, and that's that's yeah. why I can't find it. I'm so it's so embarrassing, guys. I got so many tabs open. I don't know which one I'm supposed to select. My my bad. But yeah, we'll show you the uh, the trailer for this adorable little series now. Let's say you've got little people in your home, not 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 little people like TLC little people, but like little people who have to go to a, to a kindergarten, right? They go to kindergarten and you know, that kind of thing. So Godzilla, the new movies and Godzilla minus one might be over their heads, but you're a Godzilla fan and, you know, you want to introduce your little person to, uh, you know, Big G. Well, this is a nice little vehicle to do that. It's not like the uh, Happy Tree Friends where there's horrific death and things like no. that. It's a, it's an adorable little show that you can enjoy with your children. And uh, I am going to have the, the sound on for this. I'm just going to make sure that the speed's running right. And here we go. <laughs> So cute. <laughs> okay, immediately you're going to notice something, right? You're immediately hey. going to notice that they are um, a little little, aren't they? Dang, those are so cute. Oh my god, they're adorable. Look at that. So quite obviously, you know, right off the bat, you can tell you got Rodan, you got Mothra, Green Guy, uh, Ghidorah, and Godzilla. Yeah, okay. Green guy, big G. Yeah, okay. Yeah, there's the spike tail. Sorry, my bad. It looks like and he has an afro. Mecha Godzilla, I think, right yeah. there. Yeah, you got Mecha Godzilla all the way over there. And uh, I do like that Ghidorah just has the dumb head, like the meme. <laughs> it's the meme! It's the meme. You got the angry head, the I'm happy to be here head, and I don't know where I am, but I'm just glad <laughs> to be included. You know, it's that's... Like the goddamn meme. It's the meme. It's the, it's the Ghidorah meme. And I'm so glad the Japanese are self-facing uh, enough to... To get that, um, yeah. I'm sorry to cover up Mecha Godzilla, but so quite obviously it's a children's show. It's not. It's not here to like talk about fan fiction or try to like Teen Titans go you. It's a cute little children's show. Who are you talking to? That. I, 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 who are you talking to? He's just got his hip, hands on his hips and everything. Like, who are you talking to? <laughs> so so it seems, it seems that he's going to be playing the straight man in this one. Likely it's because he's Mecha Godzilla. He can't see the audience. So he yeah. can't tell us why kids love Cinnamon Toast Crunch. No. <laughs> 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 This is so memeable already. <laughs> it's like, so beautiful. Look at look this. At he's riding Godzilla. It's so cute. I can fly too. Look at me. You thought you could you get know, away from like, Godzilla. <laughs> like, you can also say that he's humping like a Godzilla too. So. Well, I'm sure that animation will come out. There's going to be somebody that writes that fan fiction now. <laughs> come on. I'm the stranger now. <laughs> <laughs> it's so cute! Oh my god! I, I don't even know the context, but I just think it's hilarious see, thinking of Mecha Godzilla even saying anything, let alone these lines. Everybody's here! Yes. Even those guys! <laughs> I'm Chimi Midinilla. Oh, it's a little baby! What, Godzilla has a baby? Maybe it's his little brother. That's gonna be weird. <laughs> this is my son. But you're five. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Me, me the same. <laughs> Wait, dude, Mecha Godzilla is just amazing. 
<laughs> Stop noticing. That's the meme already. Stop <laughs> noticing. <laughs> <laughs> oh god like this is like stupid humor that we saw like back in the early days of the internet <laughs> yep yeah oh yeah it does it feels like new grounds it really does it feels like happy oh, tree friends god. and godzilla had a baby. Do, oh oh she's she's reading her poetry she's got her like romance diary about godzilla look at her she's got her her weird little uh uh I always forget the name of it. The, the the girl that has a crush on a boy, but she wants to beat him up instead. Oh, the Sunder? Yeah, she's got that. <laughs> non -stop monster entertainment. I lost my memory. <laughs> <laughs> Grandiose, Grandiose delusion syndrome. <laughs> no, no, it's not. No, it's not. <laughs> Grandiose delusion syndrome. God, that, that needs to be a meme. Like so bad. Yep, that's uh. Th this is this is yeah. It's un untainted innocence. You're right. It is. It's a show that you can sit down as a Godzilla fan and enjoy with your family. You don't have to worry about them saying things you have to cover your kids' ears for or explain. Just be like, why did Godzilla shoot a laser at Mecha Godzilla? You just look at your kid and say, because he was noticing. And you just go back to the show. You know, this they're like, oh, okay. Material. This is some meme material for real. Oh, definitely. I, uh, I, I, again, like we are, we're fortunate that the Japanese are kind enough to let us watch their television, really. Because yeah, it's, it's... Um, yeah, the first season's on YouTube. Mm hmm. So you can watch watch these. They're just cute little shorts. They're just cute and stupid little shorts. Yep, they're amusing, amusing little monster things. And again, like this is the stuff that we were enjoying when we were we were younger. Like it was mentioned earlier that this is like new grounds. It's like the the um, early two thousands web animation vibes. Like it's absolutely friends and like a little bit of Homestar Runner. Yeah, that's what it really felt like. If uh, it yes, felt like Home Star Runner, didn't it? <laughs> yeah, it did. It's uh, if Mecha Godzilla seems like sad. Uh, Homes strong bad, uh, strong sad. Yeah, it seems like strong no, 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 sad. He's strong bad. He he because strong bad's the the meta one. Or hmm, I thought Godzilla yeah. would be the strong bad because he shot God Mecha Godzilla in the chest with a laser. That is <laughs> true. <laughs> Actually, you're right. Mecha Godzilla would be that sad would be strong bad's reaction to a question he couldn't Godzilla. answer. <laughs> You're getting the double deuce now. <laughs> <laughs> the double deuce. <laughs> this is yeah. so cute, though. Like, it's yep. so innocent and adorable. And, and, and really, it's Godzilla. It's Godzilla. It's like that, this real is real Godzilla, too, if you think about it. It's, it's giant monsters in these movies that, that in America have been horribly terrifying. These horrible uh, uh, monsters destroying cities, stuff like that. You know, the kind of stuff that adults enjoy. And now all of a sudden, it's it's this cute little adventure where Godzilla is an innocent but highly aggressive um, afroed lizard man. And, uh, you know, it's great. Yeah, DZ3 series, I remember Chibi Godzilla. Well, it's still going. It's still going. It's got another season coming out. So, uh, like I was telling people earlier... You could sit down and watch your fa watch it with your family. You know, it's not something you're gonna have to like uh, drawn together explain why that character did that. No. So, yep. And uh, family friendly yeah. monster friends. Yeah, that 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 totally sums it up perfectly. Family mm -hmm. friendly monster friends. And I am trying to find it, and I'll bring it back up here in just a second because. Was it? Where is it? It's to, oh, there it is. Okay, sorry. Uh, and then, of course, everybody's favorite season seven, My Hero Academia, is back. That's yep, right. It's the nine year anniversary. That's what's going to air, I believe, is the nine year. No, it's Memories that's filming, that's uh, releasing um, on the nine year anniversary of My Hero Academia's anime. And the 10th anniversary of the manga is going to be in July 2014. Wow. It's such a different time. It really is. And and what really blows me away about it is um, 
the fact that it's retained its quality. Like I, I'm no, I don't like Horikoshi's writing, but the anime if you're talking itself. About the manga, yeah, the manga. The, oh my god, Horikoshi's art has just gotten better and better throughout. Well, again, the manga. I don't, I don't think he's a bad guy. I just, I don't like the way he handles some stuff. And everybody's got their gripes. I don't hate him. I don't hate the material, but I just the way he handles some stuff well, isn't my thing. But well, part the of anime, it is. Well, part of it is editorial interference, like with the villains, um, with the first villains arc when they were in the training, the summer training arc. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, the editor, he wanted to do more with the League of Villains back then, but the editorial department said no. Well, and, and again, it's not so much that. It's that I don't, Horikoshi does not treat female characters very well, especially when he's killing them. And I... I have a very hard time with that. He tends to give the female characters the most gruesome ends, and I it's really hard to get over. And the horror thing is a bit much for me because I'm a superhero fan. I like my common writer, super, uh, super Sentai. The hero wins and sometimes makes a friend out of the villain kind of thing. And My Hero Academia has been like, nope, they're dead now. Psych! You thought a redemption arc was it? Nope, they're dead. <laughs> Toga did and, deserve better. I, I I was so pissed about how Toga was handled uh, with the Chaco because the Chaco pissed me the fuck off. Because if a Chaco would have heard uh, Toga out, things would have been different. So I was I was hoping that okay, Toga is gonna kill this bitch, and I will be happy as hell. No, it didn't happen. Instead, you got like a lesbian situation going on, and I'm like, no, no, don't forgive her, you dumbass. <laughs> I feel like that that was editorial interference, though. It just it screened editorial interference because well, of the way and... everything was set up, the way everything was set up, it was set up to where Toga was going to kill Chaco. It really felt like that. But then, no, we didn't get that. That may have been the initial attempt at it anyway. But uh, again, I don't however Horikoshi intended it, it just the. the it, my problem with how he set things up is that the way this was supposed to go has been derailed in an effort to keep it interesting. And at this point, he's done so much subversion of your expectations. I just want it done. I, I really I'm, like I'm where the manga is going I, I, right now. Um, I can't wait to read this week's chapter. Um, I, and I called it, too. I knew it was going to happen. <laughs> mm. but, but we do have the trailer, though. Yeah. Oh, the other thing I should point out is um, we're in a similar situation to uh, the League of Villains arc where you have the My Hero Academia staff animating not only season seven, but the movie that's coming out in August. So, yeah, quality might suffer because of that. Mm. Hold on. There we go. Yeah, we're in the war arc. Oh, yeah, there's God. Okay, we got we actually just hit that in the in the manga. We got back to that in the manga. Um, mm -hmm. what was it, last week? Or yeah, last yeah. week. And yeah. I, I really like what Shigaraki was saying though, about how he is a hero to the League of Villains. I'm sorry, I'm spoiling it. He is a hero to the League of Villains. And I really it just really proves the point that Horikoshi likes writing for villains more than uh, heroes. He, he likes his uh, forced redemption arcs, in my opinion. Um, like, Horikoshi has been made such a negative character. I'm sorry, I'm just filling up a drink. Uh, oh, okay. Horikoshi has been made such a... Uh, a horrible character not that he's like lacking in quality or lacking in direction drive or animus you know what i mean mm -hmm. but he's just committed so much evil that i i even if deku goes in there and fixes him like he's like horiko she's setting it up i there's no way to bring him back like you can't tell people like no no he's good now it was all you uh it was all all for one's uh doing that warped this child since he was a child no that uh, was so his it's dad not his fault that. his dad did that that well in the preview we were shown that the um uh oh i forgot the little kid's name but um what's the little boy's name oh are you talking uh, about coda yeah, Coda. It was, we, we, we were shown Coda being like curled up like this and um, AFO being in the background saying none of your choices were ever yours. Oh, no, that's that was Shigaraki. I thought you were just sorry. Yeah, Shigaraki. Shigaraki. Yeah, we, we, he was a little child, though. 
It was like the little yeah. kid inside, and that's when Deku was penetrating down. If you don't know what we're talking about, I'm very sorry. We'll go back to the trailer. I got sucked into the last week's an, uh, manga installment. Oh, God, this is good, too. Oh, this fight. Oh, my God, they better not ruin this fight, because the Toya versus um, Todoroki fight, or versus Shoto fight, Dabi. is amazing. They know it's Toya by now. <laughs> but God, I gotta say, it just it doesn't have that shading, and it, it doesn't have the shading and line work that Horikoshi does um, in the manga. And something that and people were pointing this out on Twitter. I'm like, dude, I, I said this back in season two that it doesn't that um, Bones is not putting in the line work or the shading Dang or the extra right. detailing. No, he's evil Batman now. Okay. Oh, God. Like, oh, it just kills me because this could be done so much better. It just, I, I really wish there was more shading going on. Well, that's the trouble, is that anime has a budget, and you can make it as good as well, you they like, increase but... their budget. They increased the budget during COVID. Sure. But we so have to remember... Like, there's kind of no excuse at this point, Well, but... you, you have to remember that Madhouse almost went out of business putting out Redline. And I think Redline spoiled a lot of people on what modern anime is capable of doing. Not, well, like, Productions budgetary restrictions. That. Yeah, David it, Productions and Trigger are doing that, just um, doing that fine. But the thing is with Bones, and I keep telling people this, is that Bones is not known for, like, detailing. Like, that's mm. why something like Mob Psycho 100 works for, for a studio like Bones, because they can focus on, uh, like, doing all the flashy stuff and, like, make it look even cooler because one does not use um, that much uh, line work or shading in the Mob Psycho 100 um, manga. So... But here, when you have stuff like this and like say Dandadan, for example, you gotta have like a lot a lot more shading to really give it the 3D effect. Otherwise it looks really flat. Yeah. <laughs> A good chunk of the war arc adapted. I don't know how I feel about this. Yeah, again, this is where Horikoshi's weakness, in my opinion, for dismantling female characters, quite literally, in this sense, comes out. So. <laughs> That's new. Hmm. They might be putting in some additional changes or additional scenes. We might get some filler content. Yeah. <laughs> I'm liking the song. The song's mm. good. But uh, apparently it's Tagamate. Ta ta yeah. Tagamate. Tagatame. Tagatame. Sorry. But. The, title. the thing yeah. is that the anime, what the anime does, and it, it's kind of affected the manga in this way, is like they're trying to force like class 1A down everyone's throats. And it, it did affect the manga for a bit. And it pissed me off. Like, no, you don't need all class 1A to be there to intervene with Deku. You don't need them. You only mainly needed like Shoto and uh, and Bakugo for it. Mm. And, and Ida, probably. You didn't need everyone else there. Like, oh. Akamedia. Ah, uh, yeah. Oops. Oh, oh this dude. one makes me so mad. Oh, so how Stars and Stripes went out? Oh, my God. I'm still I, mad about Stars and Stripes, dude. I am Stars still mad. She's such a good character, too. But I'm she comes back, apparently, so... There. She's she's back in the late spoilers. She's back in the latest chapter. Apparently, she's been alive inside of uh, Tenko this whole time, and she points Deku to where the weak spot is. So, 
I thought that was well, yeah, it was her and um and Anna that did that, I think, right? No, uh, uh, she was lost. Uh, God, Nana, oh, Nana, show, already, Nana, no, she Nana wouldn't took... leave. She wouldn't leave. She was stuck. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Remember, and then they had to like catapult her in there as like the final yeah, so shot they catapulted that cracked in it her open because she was the source of all the trauma that happened. Yeah, for, for the family, and she got left behind. Yep. But this still makes me so mad. Like they built up Kathy so much, and then pfft, that was ah. Uh, Deku and Kathy having one fight together, uh, it, it would have it would have destroyed anime. Like it would have melted anime to the ground. Seeing the two of them fighting together. What's that? A flashback or something. I would have loved to see yeah. her fight with All Might in a flashback. Yeah. Hell, like I was, I still am pissed that Koichi didn't show up from Vigilantes. Like, because he's in yeah. at the end of the manga, he goes to um, America with uh, Captain Celebrity. Mm -hmm. I would have loved to see like Koichi there too. It just it because he's obsessed with All Might, and that's why he has wears an All Might hoodie when he goes to fight uh, crime. So it's like this, this feels wrong to not have him here. Oh. Hmm? The Todoroki arc is the best freaking arc in this manga. Let's be real. That story arc is just Oops. amazing. Well, I see we're throwing all the colors at it. Yeah. Well, it's fire versus, it's, well, fire and ice versus like blue fire. So. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's the other thing that's crazy. Spoilers. Uh, uh, Dobby having the ice power, the ice heart. That's yeah, well, that's why he was bur he burned, he kept burning himself is because of that combination of um endeavors like hottest flame with uh his with his mama's ice, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> God, that fight. Oh, God. I still can't get over how good that fight was in the manga between um, uh, Shoto and Dobby. It was so good. And just how didn't, their story was was handled was good. Didn't the Vigilantes have an OVA? They're getting an anime. Oh, okay. Yeah, so remember, there you go. Tell about. him. Yeah, Vigilantes will get an anime. It will. Yeah. Uh, if it's animated right, yeah, it, it would be good. Yeah. Um, but if it's not animated right. Well, again, hopefully they'll be able to preserve the kinetic, like, chaos of this fight between the two brothers. Yeah. <laughs> oh, if you have an aversion to hands, you're not going to like the rest of this uh, franchise. All right. No. So if fingers <laughs> bother you, you're not going to like the rest of this franchise. No. Oh, that's it. I don't know how anyone can watch the dub. I just, it baffles me. I've tried watching the My Hero Academia dub like once because I think I was mm. watching Tsunami or something. And oh, it's just, it's just, it's not the same anymore with dubs. I just can't help the The passion isn't that. there. Yeah. You know, that's the big thing. And like, and Jim Cummings, uh, Jim Cummings posted like a video. I guess there's this trend going on about like voice acting and stuff. And Jim Cummings was, you know, going through his filmography and doing, you know, some of the voices he did. And it's just, I, I thought to myself, damn, we need more voice actors like that. Where are they? Uh, Liam Mason asks, uh, "Are he zero season three? Oh, wow, zero might have. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's coming in the fall. Mm -hmm. But yeah." Um, the voice the manga, actors, uh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, as you can see, the manga hit over 100 million uh, copies in circulation, and um, Horikoshi drew some art for it and left a, a special message, too. Mm. All right, so let's see what That's that says. It says, I believe we have reached this number thanks to the fact that we are blessed to live in times in which we walk with thin-soled sneakers on a path carved by many great manga and animations. On top of that, I am honestly really happy that so many people have been willing to buy manga that I have drawn for such a long time. Thank you so much for supporting Deku and his friends. I hope that My Hero Academia is also able to expand this already paved path 
a little bit further. Kohei Horikoshi. I don't know how much longer his health can can handle it. (laughs) Because he's had health issues. Well, they all have. It's an intensely stressful uh, business, especially with the weekly deadlines and all of the global demand. And then on top of that, Horikoshi has also been like the target of a lot of the West's like hate and vitriol and venom. So it's no wonder that this gets gets to him, you know, that that's not, you know. Yeah, well, just thinking, going back to like uh, Captain Tsubasa for a second, something that um, that the manga was saying was that it's harder for him to um, you, uh, do the digital stuff. And it's very similar to what Tagashi was saying during, you know, when Hunter Hunter, like right as it was going on hiatus again, he said that he couldn't, he can only draw you know, pencil to paper, he can't do it, do the hybrid, because the stylus, I guess, affected his chronic back pain. Yeah, it doesn't surprise me. You know, it takes, again, you, you a lot of people don't, a lot of people in the West don't understand this because we have a different release pattern here in the U.S. With, with our stuff is everybody, like five different people will work on a 20-issue comic book run. Five different artists will work on it. And so there's no issue with like getting these things done in an orderly passion, fashion. These artists don't end up being burnt out, stressed out, harangued internationally. But in Japan, if you are the manga creator, of course, and you're the artist at the same time, that's you. That's your job until you, well, uh, have an Akira Toriyama situation happen to you and you check out early or on time in some cases. So it's it, that's it. There is nothing else. You either draw manga or you don't work because that's what you do. You know, that's well, what you do. Well, you like drawing manga anyway, but. <laughs> well, I'm not trying to say as like a negative thing, but like yeah. the U.S. just isn't isn't prepared for this kind of stuff. Uh, no. The work ethic is completely different. The ex- expectation of the product is completely different. So Horikoshi having health issues as a result of all this, no surprise. Yeah, I think it, he said it was his shoulders, if I remember correctly. Mm-hmm. Ooh, yeah. leaned over a desk for 12 hours a day. Well, yeah, he still has his, like, assistants and stuff like that, too. Mm-hmm. But, and it took for, I don't know, how long did it take for um, Tagashi to finally get assistance? Like, he finally got assistance a few years ago? Because he was stubborn. <laughs> he wanted to draw everything himself, but he finally realized he can't do it. Mm, yeah. Well, and again, like a lot of these manga car like that, they have... Uh... The um, they have that pride, right? Yeah, like, it's it's mine. I have to helm every inch of it. And we we saw a mangaka kill herself because she, uh, you know, couldn't handle the changes being made by the studio. And we don't we don't know what those changes were actually having an effect on her. She was clearly upset with them. Didn't like what was happening, and that's her right as the creator. I'm not trying to challenge that, but you know, um. That that happens a lot. They have their their interests usurped by a studio, and that's not okay because it's a pride thing. In the U.S., when we sign over copyright controls, we need to make we ch- we go through the lawyer um, write ups about what we have a right to and what we don't. But usually, the corporation says, "Yeah, this character who wears green and has green hair, he has pink hair now, and he wears a pink suit." Thanks for uh, thanks for permission to do that. Here's sixty billion dollars to turn this green character pink. And that's how we do it over in the, over in Japan. This is not how it is done. No. But so. something that was brought up about Dr. Stone, this has been happening a lot more where um, we're seeing like Magaka team ups, like with uh, one does the writing, one does the art. Mm-hmm. Um, and I mean, we've seen it with, uh, with Kenyon. Um, actually, Sandrovich does it for all of their series. Um, and what's the other one? And obviously with Oshinoko and, um, and Renai Daikau, okay, Love Agency, Akka's writing um, both of those series, and there's a different artist on each one drawing it. I mean, we saw it with Dragon Ball Super prior to, you know, Toriyama's passing. Toriyama was doing the writing. He really got stepped up on the writing. Um, I think it was around the Moro arc. That's when he really came in and stepped up um, uh, on the writing. Um, but yeah, we have it with Fairy Tale 100 Years Quest because Mashima is drawing like, 
two other manga as well <laughs> and writing it himself. So Fairy Tail had to suffer, unfortunately. I love Atsuo, but god damn, that art is just, it's not as good as, you know, Mashima's uh, art in like Fairy Tail or Eden Zero, which is ending soon, and um, and Dead Rock. Uh, Liam Mason says, I don't know how I'd survive having someone tell me not to draw someone's chest too big. Not to make this character's thighs too thick with two C's. Um, the the really I've had to run into this before because I I've worked with uh, manga artists that were excited to uh, draw a top heavy characters even though uh, what I had provided was not that. And uh, you can be a dick about that. You could be really mean about it if you want to, or you can be polite like I was. And I said, you know what? Those are a little too large for the the emotional impact I want to have on people looking at that art. But I do appreciate your enthusiasm. And that's how you handle that as, as like someone talking to the artist about it. You as the artist, though, could take that however you'd like. But as the commissioner, I've always found that being polite and a little jokey helps things, you know, work. Oh, yeah. Someone mentioned um, in the comment section. Well, someone mentioned about Spice and Wolf. And then we have um, another person mentioning about um, Mushuka Tensei, uh, Jobless Reincarnation Season 2. Yeah. And that time I um, got reincarnated into a slime Season 3. Um, the anime for the for, for slime is okay. But Mushuka Tensei, it's good. But man, that, I'm spoiled by that manga art. <laughs> hmm. The manga adaptation of Mushuka Tensei is beautiful. And same with um, reincarnating into a slime. That manga adaptation is is gorgeous, and I know that one as well as um, Windbreaker. For those that are curious, they are all on um, K Manga, so you can ac uh, access it legally. It's not like a lot of other series which you cannot do that. But the first yeah. two seasons of Overlord were pretty well done. I haven't seen season three yet. I heard I three was out. very controversial. Oh boy, of course. Well, speaking of controversial. Oh, yes. Soul leveling. Yeah, this is a bit of problem for a long time or more recent problem where um, where there's some directors that are not going the full anime route in terms mm. of um, the art. And the best example would be Chainsaw Man. And well, fans were not happy about that. Um, but that really but when I saw that, that really bugged me because you're dealing with Dubu, Dubu's art and Dubu died prior to this coming out, like a couple years ago, Dubu passed away from a chronic illness. And oh. to see this, see the director say this, that really, really pisses me off. Hmm. Well, I mean, you know, like we said, there were, this is what, what we were talking about earlier with the changes the studios make versus the creators. And um, so here we are, you know? Yeah, you don't have the really beautiful expressions that Dubu did in um, the soul leveling uh, Mamwa. God, it just doesn't, oh God, it just does not do Dubu's art Apparently the justice. article didn't want to show that. Okay. There's a, there was, um, <laughs> there's one? anime times you could click on that and go to the actual thing, but it said they did have a quote in there in the article that is kind of, that was from it. Here it is right there. All right, anime times. Let's see if it'll translate. There uh, it goes. Yeah, it translates. It's just there's no pictures. No. Oh yeah, they didn't include pictures, huh? Yeah. Oh well, we got the little little goofy guy face over here, so we know what we're talking about. You know, there's obviously a difference between these two representations. This character is very expressive in the foreground, in the background. Uh, you know, it's very stoic. Yeah, lots of difference here. And, and it's clear that these two art styles are not going to be conjoined together. The character that's in the background has a very serious art style, the one that's not going to do very well with exaggerated expressions. So, yeah. yep, it's pretty clear that they made a decision to make this a very serious. Yeah, there's a quote from the director that, that was in here from the interview that really, this right here is very frustrating. Shoot. There we go. Yeah, I thought this work uh, required the high-end visuals that are trending these days. Therefore, I try to avoid cartoon-like expressions as much as possible using compositions, colors, and shooting uh, processing similar to live-action footage. That right there is what happened with Chainsaw Man. 
And it did not, people will say in the West will say it worked, but, but in Japan, it's the opposite. They did not like it at all. They hated how Chainsaw Man had that um, live action realism uh, animation. Mm. When they wanted something, when you see Chainsaw Man, it is crazy. It is um, abstract. And to have it in live, like a live action thing just did not make sense. And also the CGI looked really bad with uh, Denji's chainsaw head. But um, but anyways, um, however, I, this would inevitably take too much time in regards and energy to the live action stuff. And the images themselves would become too heavy. It might even uh, kill the flavor of each section. And to reach a compromise, we had repeated discussions with the staff of each section um, at meetings and during the video checks. I'm very curious what you what you think? I think if anime goes in this direction, and I don't know if Crunchyroll had anything to do with it, because Crunchyroll does have um, consultants in regards to soul leveling, because they invested in it. So I don't know if they had something to do with it. But uh, I'm not sure where they get the idea to avoid cartoon like expressions, because Dragon Ball, uh, Demon Slayer, My Hero Academia, of course, the, sh the Shonen anime all employ this they all naruto did so everything that we classically understand even bleach had it they yeah had, bleach, um, and they got bleach it's a little bit complicated with thousand year blood war because some of the comedic expressions and a lot of the comedic scenes were cut and that yeah. really irritated the hell out of me because when that happens it means the anime is trying to take itself way too seriously uh yeah yeah this one had a uh, had race swaps in it yes yep the second yeah, season. Castlevania anyway. had the race race swaps. But um this uh what I'm what I come to understand what you're saying here is that this this to me feels like an effort to appeal to the West. Mm -hmm. What 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 this feels like is like, oh, our our cartoon like expressions that anime has become known for, the over exaggerated eyeballs, mouth, sweat drops, these are things that make people in America and the UK uncomfortable as they are unfamiliar with these types of over exaggerated expressions so we'll iron them out so it looks like um you probably you may not have gotten into this this is like 2003 2004 he-man it was the revival yeah. that was like super serious yeah yeah and it just fell flat because it was it was really cool at the beginning but then you're like there's no punchline there's no joke everybody's super serious that man has a neck that extends seven feet and there is a muscle bound blonde guy walking around in a like a fur thong and everyone is so serious okay it's it, that's the problem i see right here immediately is that this anime is based on a manga that has moments where the exaggerated expressions underline the interaction or you know scene that's happening and without those it's going to be really awkward when the character is supposed to be having an exaggerated reaction. And the best he can do is open his eyes wide and hang his mouth open. I just, uh, I just can't help but think about what Perini said in regards to soul leveling that crunchy roll was, you know, invested money in soul leveling. And um, they, I, I just have a feeling it was them that did it. Like some consultants they sent over did it and influenced the decisions. Yeah, tell him you're right. It sounds like they're trying to use cheap cheat codes for the anime. And that, yep, that's exactly it. It's not it fair to like Dubu. To it's really no. not fair to do that to Dubu's art. Because especially since he, he died. And, and what, prior to, you know, dying, because this is when the anime was announced initially, he said he was looking forward to seeing it. And I just, I feel horrible. You know, again, the corporation's going to do what it wants. That's it took, you know, it took the life of that lady who didn't like having her um, lady manga um, warped so much. And, you know, again, they, they want really bad to break into the US market, but they can't. There's nothing wrong with the product they're sending right now. The no, problem the is with the recipients. The mom was one of the um, best-selling graphic novels. So leveling mm -hmm. is it's very popular in the U.S. Yep, but they so they I, don't I, have I, faith I in it. Understand. That's why well, I'm so I, confused. I'm like, why would you do that when you know soul leveling has a big audience and they like the art? Arvidas is definitely blame Crunchyroll, and I guarantee that you're right. They have a hand in this, but I think what they were telling them is you have to appeal to U.S. audiences, and U.S. audiences like. 
the Thundercat and anim- the Thundercats anime that came out. They like the uh, Airbender, Avatar: The Last Airbender, and Avatar stuff like the- that. And well, Avatar: The Last Airbender had oh, emotion yeah. in it. There, That's there's true. A difference. They did have Sokka, especially had over exaggerated expressions. Yeah, Sokka yeah. and uh, um and Aang. So I have a feeling that Crunchyroll did this. Um, They probably did go and tell them, like, not necessarily to take out the faces, but to aim the anime at an American audience. Or at the Western audience, yeah. Because they invested in it. And um, I remember Perini, in the Virgin interview, Perini was saying that, um, like, they uh, would influence um, on how the artists, like, kind of animate things to appeal to um to the western audience too so yeah i wouldn't Mm -hmm. be surprised if it was if it was crunchyroll that did this and you know we're probably going to see more of it uh you're going to see more of it because they want in but they don't they don't realize that all they have to do is work with a distributor uh you know uh, an adaption department that actually has the passion for the medium okay so a, a thing we know all know about hollywood is that actors are currently not paid to act they're currently to be the, paid to be themselves. When you see Vin Diesel in a movie, he is Vin Diesel. And he is doing Vin Diesel things, saying Vin Diesel things, making Vin Diesel expressions into the camera that he does in every other movie because he's not the character, he's Vin Diesel. It's the same thing when you see uh, John Cena, when you see Jason Momoa, they're the same character all the time because they're not a character, they're them, that's all. They're just asked to put on an accent or not when they do this like Jim, and, they're not like jim carrey who just he immerses himself right in, uh, or uh, joaquin phoenix where he yeah. like emaciated himself for the role of the joker you know mm-hmm. this kind of yeah you could see john cena yeah <laughs> it's my shotting gun but uh the uh, can, yeah can the shotting gun see john cena <laughs> but uh the uh this is your ultimate test sasuke sasuke but uh, the uh, this this is again like what what you're gonna see is um, they don't have faith in what they've created. That's the problem. Is we've made them so paranoid by this wall here, this fear we have that anime will get in and undo all the social programming. And unfortunately, you know, solo leveling is gonna be the first of many that end up tailored to try and appeal to the U.S. audience when really. They need to stop like leaving Outlaw Star in the dust. They need to stop leaving the stuff that was appealed, was deliberately adapted for, you know, afternoon cartoons because it appealed to Westerners. You know, a lot of people in the Gundam franchise don't like Gundam Wing. But when you look back at what the uh, Gundam Wing franchise is, uh, uh, the Gundam Wing installment is just on the surface, colonies fighting against an aristocratic uh, government uh, that has ultimate imperial control over the almost the entire planet. And only these rebels joined by other aggrieved parties are able to overthrow this oppressive aristocratic group. And one of them falls from their ranks supporting the bad guys to become a good guy. It's the American Revolutionary War with giant robots that can't be destroyed, except when they want to destroy themselves. That was my favorite part about Gundam Wing. You can't destroy a Gundam unless it wants to be destroyed. That's the only (laughs) way you can destroy it. But, well, actually, I would say Chainsaw Man would be the first one that was really cared to, you know, trying to appeal itself to Western audiences, and it worked. Right, I I forgot. The voice actors. I I forgot. So Johnny Depp, right, he's a good example of this, but, like, the voice actors themselves, like, Chris Sabat says this when he was talking about being, you know, uh, All Might. He said he walked into the office and says, all right, give me the coolest, most important characters lines. And that that was it for All Might. He tells a joke about it, but it's very annoying to think that that's what he thought about this character, who had already in Japan, because the show had already aired over there and the manga had already aired, had become a very prominent and important character in that pop culture scene at the moment. And then to have him just be like, all right, yeah, give me a character 5592J, all right? And I'll go spit out some lines. That's why you feel the dub lacks, is because there's no passion in it. So yeah, why the old like- dubs. Well, it's not like, um, as I was saying earlier, it's not like Jim Cummings who immersed himself in all these different roles and really showed the versatility of his voice. Like he did, um, obviously he did Tigger and then he was um, one of the guards in in Aladdin and you hear like this distinct 
change. And it's the same thing with Tara Strong. Tara Strong changes her voice all the time. Um, it, it's different. Yeah. Her Timmy Turner voice is different than uh, Raven. her uh, Raven voice. Yeah, my, my favorite, she was at a convention and they had uh, all these voice actors up there and they were all reading parts of uh, the first, the New Hope Star Wars. Mm -hmm. And uh, they casted Bubbles as Darth Vader. And, <laughs> oh God, it was great. And Jake the dog was Princess Leia. It was great. Oh, oh, it was great. But this, again, this is the magic that they're missing. They were so passionate about doing this stuff because they knew the material and they knew how to parody it. Whereas over in Japan, they believe that when you do things, you do it with all of your energy, all of your passion, or else don't do yeah, it at all. For it, I mean. And so here in America, we don't do that. These voice actors, just like the, the on-screen actors, are hired for the same reasons. Well, we want Chris Sabat's big baritone voice in this anime, so we're just going to bring him in. He's going to play the guy. Whether he cares, whether he's going to put the passion behind it, doesn't matter. We're just going to toss him in because he's got the big, booming voice. And that's... <laughs> That's it. The end. You don't and have that, the, and then there's also the race-based casting that's happening too. Of course. Yeah. Except the huge, black man played Samurai Jack and nobody brings that up, right? Nobody's you like, know? "Hey, we need to redo Samurai Jack because a black guy voiced the Japanese guy." Nope, nobody does that. No. Oh well. But, you know, we'll transition from bad news to I guess a bit of relief. It's not great news, but it's a bit of relief to close out the show. Captain yeah. Tsubasa is uh, losing its mangaka. The manga itself won't be going away, but its original creator appears to be retiring. But anyways, um, this is what uh, Takahashi, you want to read it or you can read it. No, no, it's okay. Uh, oh, okay. I'm not familiar with this. so. All right. So let me explain Takahashi and Captain Tsubasa. Captain Tsubasa, if without it, um, a lot of the sports series that you see today, like Haikyuu or Blue Lock or Bungo, they would not exist without Captain Tsubasa. Nah, it started in uh, in the 80s, um, 1981, and it's been going with uh, different iterations ever since. And it's really heartbreaking to see the mangaka go out like this because they were saying that... Uh, um, uh, that they have so much more they want to tell that they still have to finish the Olympic Games, which is where Captain Tsubasa, um, the current uh, iteration, the Rise Rising Sun final is, is um, is where Tsubasa and uh, the Japan team go, you know, get the World Cup for um, for Japan because that was the whole thing. The whole premise was Tsubasa is going to want is. Um, his goal was to bring home the World Cup to Japan. And we've seen him in uh, in the Spanish uh, League, La Liga. We've seen characters in the Italian League as well. And I think in uh, the German League as well. And um, this, it's crazy that this manga has been going for 43 years. It, mm -hmm. It's unbelievable that this has been going for that long. And something that bothered me when I was reading Takahashi's messages, I'm like, why didn't you get a successor prepared? That's <laughs> the first thing that came to mind. Why didn't you do what like Akira Toriyama did and get a successor prepared? Why didn't you have like a contingency plan what? like um, like with Oda and one with One Piece? It consider, that really kind of bothered me. Well, consider that Takahashi sounds like he probably didn't plan for this. Like Akira Toriyama's death probably, like Oda, has him reflecting on his own mortality and just how much he wants to devote his life to this, whether he wants to die drawing or perhaps sitting on a beach. You know, but yeah, he's, but as he said here, he's semi-retiring. He loves drawing yeah. and he doesn't want to like fully end Subasa's story. So what they're going to do is um, they're going to have um, like storyboard drafts, do manga like storyboard draft style, which will be very okay. interesting to see. Mm -hmm. But the other thing is, is that it is not licensed in the U.S., Right. I don't know if it's because of the FIFA, uh, paying FIFA for like the name usage or what, but yeah, it you have to sail the high seas to read Captain Subasa, and it is worth it. It is so good. I just wish we could get it officially licensed here. Um, I know it's very popular. Um, well, a lot of series are popular south of the border, but yeah, South America loves and Central America loves Captain Subasa. Well, uh, we do have a question from a member of the channel, Arvita. Thoughts on Spice and Wolf remake so far? Um, 
I've seen the differences, and this is something that happens a little bit too, is when you have like a remake, like with Spice and, uh, Spice and Wolf, for example, you see like how much heart there was. There was a little bit more heart in the 2008 version. The, don't get me wrong, it looks beautiful, but there's like certain, there's that certain thing, like whether it's like a line work or just a little bit of shading or like the facial expressions, it's just, it's just missing that extra oomph that the 2008 version had, at least from what I've seen. Okay. I, I haven't uh, seen either version, so you have to forgive me, Arvita. I'm not uh, familiar with Spice and Wolf. But, it's a uh, very, very cute series. Okay. All yeah. Right. Well, um, now that we're here to the end of the show, I figured as we're winding down, we'll talk of, we'll look at the uh, original pitch for Funimation. Oh yeah, dead. I forgot about that. Yeah, this this was, this was wild when I saw this. So we'll take you back to the year 1990 something, and here is Funimation making a pitch for its existence. Welcome to the world of Dragon Ball, a world Newsweek calls a kid sensation. The flash God, that's right. of toy and <laughs> it's like this comic is sans. so 90s. <laughs> yep. This is like advertising a Chuck E. Cheese franchise, you know? Yeah. The, movie, the Disney of the Orient. Dragon. The Disney the of Disney the of Orient. <laughs> the Disney of the Orient. Oh. oh my God. See here an Asian man attacking another set of Asian men. Ball is the greatest creation of Akira Toriyama, Japan's most famous and popular animation artist. Interesting. Not long An artist, animation artist. Animation, he, he would be thrilled to know. <laughs> in Dragon Ball is gargantuan, reaching kids five and older. The animated series is cleared in over 80. Look at this. Look <laughs> at so this. It's so tiny, it's all good. Seven percent of the U.S. Dragon Ball Z has been cleared in over 90 percent. Okay, so like most of the markets weren't on board. They're like, oh, it's a little boy with violence. Why is he so mean? <laughs> Goku and his friends are truly an international marketing phenomenon and are currently the number one animated show. Imagine seeing this in the 90s and going like, yeah, I gotta have <laughs> this. Red, like the clay earth. Yeah. Oh All the stock footage. Japan, France, Spain, and Hong Kong. The US yes, bigger markets than the US still. France and Spain. Look at, look at those X-Men. <laughs> Screw yeah, you, X-Men. Screw you, Ninja Turtles. This is Dragon Ball Z country. That's what this is. This is DBZ country. Yes, <laughs> invasion is next. Billions of dollars in Dragon Ball. Billions of dollars. Yes. It's the PowerPoint <laughs> of it all. <laughs> you couldn't use a bigger font for the billions part, dude. It's billions of dollars. Come on, this is the 90s. That's big news. All merchandise have already been sold. Toys, t-shirts, lunchboxes. Lunchboxes! and almost every other conceivable <laughs> the happy birthday effect from your local roller <laughs> rink <laughs> this is so 90s it's not even funny somebody paid money for this the licensed tie-in will be available and in store soon bandai america will back this release with unprecedented promotional unprecedented <laughs> Unprecedented. Uh, act now and you'll get unprecedented promotional support. Support. <laughs> Millions of Dragon Ball toy packages will feature advertising for the Kid Mark video release. In addition, for the as opposed to the Adult Mark video release coming soon. Yeah, you can't have that. No, can't have. No, animation is not for adults at all. It's only for kids. I fucking hate that mentality. Addition. Bandai America will feature the video release in their television advertising, generating over 147 million consumer. Whoa! Whoa! That's like a PewDiePie video. Whoa! <laughs> no way! Impressions. Kid Mark's first release will feature three video tapes. He's doing a wheelie. The blood rubies. <laughs> this is for children. <laughs> VHS tapes too. Oh yeah. The exciting pilot that launched the series, followed by action-packed episodes such as Secret of the Dragon. <laughs> He's a happy Asian boy, you see? He's a happy Asian boy. Ball and the Nimbus Cloud of Roshi. 
Each tape contains two episodes, <laughs> over 48 minutes of fun-filled adventures. Retail support will include ads in video store and billboard. Whoa, it added a video store, a billboard, and a magazine? No way! <laughs> this is like, so 90. A whole 80 people are going to see that. Whoa! <laughs> Dude, this is kind of 80s and 90s, huh? Yeah, it's like, it's it's really like peak 1991. I feel like. <laughs> it is. Magazine and a counter display, a floor display. A oh, floor display. Wait, 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 where are these displays at? I kind of want one. The video, st oh, right, they're out there somewhere. And a clip strip. The name's. Oh, a clip strip. Oh, uh, there's a clip strip out there. Can you believe it? Goku, Bulma, and Oolong mean act. He said the name's right! He did! Action, fun, and adventure for kids everywhere. Don't miss out Not on the worldwide phenomenon of Dragon Ball. They made a brand new logo and they screwed it up. <laughs> Goku's face looks so bad. And he's wearing the orange gi of his adulthood. Of his, like, yeah. later years and not the blue gi that he wears. Oh. The order date is September 9th. Thank God it's the 7 or 11th. That'd be bad if it was September 11th. The street date is September Goku. It would Goku caused 9-11, just so you know. September 24th, <laughs> with a suggested retail price of twelve ninety. I hear your trade towers are strong. I hear your trade towers are strong. Let me fight them. Dragon Ball. I like how he keeps repeating it. Dragon Ball. Let me just say Dragon Ball. Let me just say it again. Dragon Ball. <laughs> Oh well. There you go, folks. Now you know what Funimation thought this was all about. But I gotta give him credit. 1991 managing to say Goku, Bulma, and Oolong. Like oh, anybody cared more. about Oolong. Yeah. Like anybody cared about Oolong versus Yamcha. But apparently like, they were why like didn't they mention Yamcha. <laughs> well, they were probably looking at that name and they were like, I'm not doing that. Mm -mm. It's not happening. I'm not Yamcha. Yamche. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing Yamche. <laughs> But that's so funny, though. All they needed was the Dragon Ball pencil toppers. <laughs> yeah, right. That's the other thing. They bring up Oolong in there. It's like the children's show. He's the panty obsessed pervert pig. What? Well, He's literally a pig. He's kind of a perv, too, but. Yeah, that's true. It's for children. And then Bulma lifts her shirt to show off <laughs> herself to Roshi. <laughs> it's for children. Act now. For children. For the kids. Oh, well, we're at the end of the show, and that means one thing. Nerdigans, where can they find you? Um, you can find me on Nerdigans Inc. at YouTube, and this time I put my Twitter handle in my display thing. So make sure you follow me on Twitter for more anime and manga and video game coverage, because apparently I'm an important part of the Gamergate 2 movement, and I didn't realize that. <laughs> well, welcome aboard. Welcome yeah, to the... Yeah, go figure. The gamer cost, I guess. You know, I'll see you in Guantanamo. But uh, <laughs> I'm yeah. getting blocked by tons of publishers. Well, Compulsive Games uh, just blocked me, and I'm getting. I think some gaming journalists are starting to block me more too. So I, I must yeah. be doing something right. Right, you're up there with Grums now. You're gonna have to have like one of those kill counts on the side well, of your uh, Twitter me, account. So. Well, ah. Grums follows me, so <laughs> there is moving that. on up. But. Uh, <laughs> But uh, yeah, over here on Bounding, we do videos uh, every, well, most of the days, <laughs> most of the days over here. And come Monday again, Jacob and I do the Monday Rewind here on uh, Bounding Ends Comics, where we go over what happened over the weekend on Monday, believe it or not, like the show says. So uh, yeah, thank you for enjoy enjoying the news. I hope you did. And uh, also, uh, don't forget to uh, let it rip. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.